Rob Pink is here with Personal Defense Network. I'm on one of the Personal Defense Network training tour stops, and I'm actually underneath the RT Smoke and Gun Shop at the Pioneer Shooting Center. And this is one of the coolest ranges I've been in a while. You know, I'm practically in Manhattan. We're about 30 minutes from Midtown. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna have a good steak tonight, but today I'm hanging out with a bunch of really responsible gun owners looking for personal defense shooting training, and we don't get a lot of that in this part of the world. You know, I mentioned earlier, we're kind of in the heart of the anti-Second Amendment political movement in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast here in the US, but there's a lot of good people here looking for training, and I'm honored to have been one of the first instructors invited to this training center, shooting center that's underground. It's completely refurbished. They opened up about a year ago, and it's a really cool place. They've got a great gun shop upstairs, and it's the first time that I've been able to play with the Glock 43. So the Glock 43, of course, everybody's been talking about it now for about a month. It was teased, it was shown, it was displayed. We've had lots of my friends have gotten to shoot it. Well, now they're showing up at the gun shops, and sure enough, there's a gun shop right here in New York State that has a few of these up there on the counter, and this is the first one that they've actually gone down to the range with, and they're gonna let me shoot it. Now, I haven't fired any shots with it yet. You know, I've had it in my hand. Now, of course, I've been familiar with the Glock 42. I shot it about a year ago, also on a training tour stop. I think I was up in New Hampshire when I shot the first one. It's always cool to get my hands on one of these and shoot, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of going to the press events and standing around and firing two shots up in the cubby hole or something and just say I shot it. You know, I like to actually come down here into a range, get some time with it, put it in my hand, feel the gun, see how it's going to perform in the context of what we do in our combat focus shooting classes. That's what we're doing here is we're running a two-day combat focus shooting class. So the gun's hot. We've all got our eyes and ears on. And I'm right here at this 10, 12, 15-foot range, right about 15-foot range, right where the students have been shooting. Go to the ready position, and let's just see how it feels, see how it shoots. Of course, I'm very familiar with the Glock family of handguns. Probably shot Glocks more than anything else for the last 20-plus years, 94, 95, when I bought my first one. Lots of time with the subcompact. Obviously, it's my first shot out of the single stack 9mm Glock 43. So far, so good. One of the things we know about a subcompact gun, a single stack, is that this is going to be a very narrow surface area up against the hand. So the recoil is going to feel sharper than it would out of a wider gun, right? Recoil is a little bit sharper, but it's, it's nothing close to punishing or anything like that, like you might get out of a, a single stack gun that's shooting a 45 or a 337 SIG. So the 9 millimeter, very controllable. This gun has enough weight out front, too, that it's coming back down very quickly. No problem there. Let's go ahead and try to put one of the shots into the head. All right, target is a hit. We got a, a really good trigger for the Glock. Uh, I like it for defensive shooting. It's not any different than any other Glock trigger. It's just a Glock trigger. For, for Glock to come out with a trigger in this that would be different wouldn't make any sense. You know, people will want to put it, I'm sure somebody's going to come out with an aftermarket trigger and say, well, we need to put something in here that we're going to be able to shoot more precisely with that's a smaller gun. This is a defensive gun. This is a deep concealment gun. Now, there aren't a lot of holsters on the market for this particular gun right now. This one's made to fit a shield. As you can tell by the belt loops here, it's actually made to be worn probably back here at the four or five o'clock. I carry appendix. This works. I see a lot of people pressing different holsters into service. I know that Crossbreed Holsters has finally come out with uh, one of these. You know, it took them like, what, two weeks? Finally, they're on the market with one. I love Crossbreed Holsters. I imagine if I put one of these in my collection, I'm going to get one of the Crossbreed Appendix style holsters. Right now, this one's working just fine. Let's go ahead and go from the holster. Now, what we see there is I did not get any slide lock. I didn't get slide lock. The magazine not drop free. So that's an issue. Why didn't the magazine drop free? I don't know. Why didn't we go to slide lock? I'm not sure. Literally, that was the first magazine I shot out of the gun. Let's take a look. When we look at the bottom of this gun, we see that it has the notch that any subcompact gun is going to need to make sure that my hand isn't covering the magazine. Now, because my hand is obviously bigger than the grip, it may be that my hand got in the way of that magazine dropping free. This is the flush fit magazine. The spare magazine that I've got here is still only six rounds, but you can see it has that pinky extension, but it doesn't have anything that's gonna touch my hand, so it shouldn't be any worse, All right? Let's try this again, see if this time it'll lock open and or if it'll drop free. Got it to lock open. I was really careful to not be covering up that slide stop. And now I'm in a position where I had slide lock, the magazine dropped free, drive back out and get the shot. Again, that time it locked back and that time it dropped free. So, so far, Glock 43, you literally just saw the first, what, 12 or 13 rounds, I guess. I had six plus one and then I had six go into it. 
They're all where I want them to be. Good spread out in the high center chest, relatively rapid fire at that 15 foot range. That's where we want to be. We want to put a shot in the head. It goes in the head. You know, this gun's going to be very popular. We know that. Would I rather it had 10 rounds or nine rounds? Absolutely. Is it going to be my go-to carry gun? Probably not. I have a gun that I like, the XDS, the four inch model. I've been carrying it for a year and a half. Probably not going to switch out, but I certainly wouldn't discourage anybody from trying this gun out. I think there are some nuances because it's a smaller gun. You got to be careful of keeping that thumb off of that slide stop. And obviously you want to make sure that you're opening up the bottom of the hand and not blocking that magazine from dropping free when you go to reload. We talk about a subcompact gun, anything for deep concealment, we may not even be carrying a spare magazine. The extra pinky extension, probably not going to use that either if we're really looking for maximum concealment. Right? We put this into this holster. Now this holster is a little wide, it's being pressed into service, and with this t-shirt, I can feel like that's going to show a little bit more than it should because it's not that close to the body inside the waistband holster like I like. But overall, Glock 43, First test, thumbs up. Appreciate the Pioneer Shooting Center, RT Smoke and Gun Shop for letting me try it out. These guys are great. If you're anywhere in that greater Manhattan area, you're in Connecticut, you're in Northern Jersey, you want to come over to a good range where they appreciate people who are responsible gun owners who are interested in personal defense training, this is it. I plan on training here a lot more. Um, you know, it's important that we support everyone that's uh, kind of behind enemy lines, occupied territory, right? It's one thing to be able to go into Texas or Arizona and teach a class. I can do that 20 times a year. Getting invited to come up here and going through and jumping through the hoops and working with people who are also jumping through the hoops and fighting for their right in a very oppressed area to keep and bear arms, to carry guns for personal defense. We have people in the class with New York carry permits. We have people in the class with carry permits from other states. We have a lot of really cool gun owners here and a cool staff that's interested in supporting and kind of pushing back and getting some of the Second Amendment rights back in this area. So really appreciate them not only fighting that fight every day, but uh, getting the latest and greatest and making sure their customers have what they need in gear and in training.